Hey all, welcome to Parker's Reefs. On today's episode, I'm gonna take you on a tour of Ernie's absolutely incredible nine foot home reef aquarium. All right, thank you for joining me in another episode of Parker's Reefs and I can assure you, you are in for an absolute treat on this episode because I have just returned from filming and getting a tour of Ernie's home reef tank. Now, for those of you who don't know, Ernie's a fairly private kind of guy, but he did used to run a fish store in Melbourne here called Reflections a number of years ago. And since then has been running a business called Aquatecture, which does the install, the build, the maintenance, the upgrade, all of the things you would need for a large reef tank, whether it be at a private residence or in a commercial application. And um, getting an invite to see Ernie's tank in person is almost like getting an invite to see a unicorn because I've heard all of the stories about it and I was very, very excited to see it firsthand. And um, let me just say it lives up to expectations. I'm not sure if there's much more I can say as a preamble for this tank. So I think really the best thing to do is just roll the footage. So um, let's jump into it. All right, guys, welcome to Parker's Reef. I am here with Ernie with what has to be one of the most incredible home reef aquariums I've ever seen. We've got a microphone on the man. He's going to tell us all about this system. So firstly, Ernie, thank you so much for welcoming us into your house. No problem. What can you tell us about this incredible creation you've got in front of us here? What size is it? Where do we start? Tell me about the tank. Uh, yeah, where do we start? Um, the tank's uh, nine footer. Uh, I think 800 high, 700 wide. Uh, it's been, this tank has been running about five years now, um, but I had an eight foot there before, a lot of the stock came out of that one, uh, which was running for about another five plus years. Um, yeah. Incredible so, system. Can you tell us, um, so it's a nine, five foot, roughly, we're talking probably two and a half thousand litres, something like that? Yeah, and there's a big six foot sump underneath as big well. Big sump underneath. Uh, which we can show when you're ready. Yeah, yeah, no trouble. Uh, Another two or three hundred litres down there as well for stability. Amazing. Um, lots of flow in there, big, big four, big tons of pumps. Yeah, yeah, you've got some yeah, big Twinsy old school pumps yeah, in there. 6200s, I think, or a mix of different ones. Uh, I think they have six on there at one stage, but they, the corals got in the way of that. This is an, like, they're working an absolute treat. You've got four big Twinsies in there and this is a big tank and there's yeah. no shortage of flow. Like you can see even in around the weir, you look up at the surface there, there's no yeah. shortage of flow. You don't need to have 30 pumps scattered along the back wall. No, they're no. doing a great job. Yeah. No, I hate to, when there's too much equipment inside the tank, it's- it Detracts. It detracts from it and that's why even, it would be better if I had the pumps towards the front as well. Mm -hmm, but mm -hmm. just, to me, that's just even more ugly. So where they are, if I, if I, I, I change them around occasionally to change the flow up for the corals and the fish just to give them a, something new, you know, a new bit of current. Definitely, um, yep, yep. You know, so keep it, it fresh. Does, yeah, keep it fresh for them. Absolutely. Because, yeah, these pumps, uh, geez, about, again, about five or six years old, these ones as well. Working a treat. Now, before we go into the rest of the equipment, yeah. We we can't go through um, we can't get through equipment before we talk about some of the inhabitants in this tank yeah. from the yeah. the fish to the corals. I mean, we, this video would be eight hours long if we went through every single coral in the tank. But oh, for sure, can you take us through oh. some of your favourite pieces in the system? Ah, where, where do I start? The fish wise, um, I've got some fairly old fish. I I'm, I'm not into super rare fish just for the sake, but I'm more into keeping things well keeping things healthy and taking pride in how long I can keep some of the livestock going. Certainly. Um, some fish, I don't know, some people know me as, you know, the owner or the ex-owner of Reflections Aquarium down in Moravian for yes. many years. Uh, so I had a lot of livestock even at the shop and I brought some home and I sold the business about four years ago. Like for example, this purple tank here is about 15 years old. Wow. One of my ex-employees had him for about eight years, when he closed down his eight-foot tank, I took, brought him home. And look, he's the site. He hasn't grown much. He's but healthy as you can see. No discoloration. Yeah, he's gorgeous. Um, this uh, tang here is a common name. Just a, a ring-tailed tang or white ring-tailed tang. Sure. You, you know, in the Dusumeri family, he's gro grown from a, about a five-centimeter baby from one of my clients' uh, school that had him for years. And yes. When they closed the tank down about, again, five, six years ago, I brought him home and he's there. So he's 
again, oh, close to 15 years old as well. He's an absolutely beautiful yeah. fish. He's got that lovely color yeah. on the tail, and then he's got um, this bright colored uh, yeah. mouth and yeah. such a... Uh, he used to look much brighter. He's getting old now, as I said. That, at that age, is, he's losing a bit of color. Oh, he um, still looks pretty yeah. vibrant here in the, in the flesh. He's a gorgeous fish. Yeah, so some of the fish I, you know, I've got from old customers as they close down their tanks, like the Tommy Nini. Yeah, he's from a stunner. From, a, from old customers, he's, he's, you know, I've had him in there about five or six years now. Yes. Uh, what else? Yes, so. What about that freckle tang? He is probably uh, yeah. the nicest freckle tang yeah. I've seen anywhere. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you can see the face on him. Yeah, full, full on freckles. He's about 10 years now, I think. Absolute and, showpiece and fish. From tiny. I love um, the way the freckles on the face. Yeah. Continue throughout the body, but they just get smaller. Yeah. Oh, they get brighter. Feeding time, and when or when he's having a chase around with one of the other fish, they get even brighter. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So, Absolutely so they're, they're Very underrated fish. When you see them in the shops, um, you know when they're about five, six centimeters, they just look like a grayish brown fish. Yes. So a lot of people don't realize what they what they're going to mature to. One of the few fish that actually get prettier as they get older, rather yeah. than than sort of paling out and, and not, just not that expensive here in Australia. Yeah, definitely. Um, the same with the yellow tang. I mean, these yeah, we know they're hard to get hold of now, but yeah. He's been a family member for some time. Yeah, again from a from a client's tank before. Um, what else? The clowns. These clowns uh, from Queensland, I got them, which they're not normally that dark in Queensland, but okay. uh, I've had them again over, well over 10 years. Uh, they're a bit frustrated at the moment. I, I had a big bubble tip anemone. They've lived in and bred for years, but the, the anemone was moving around. You can see I don't have much space. <laughs> There's not a lot of spare real estate yeah, for anemones finally, to go for a wander. Finally blew the bullet and took him out. So they've been frustrated for about six months. So they're, they're laying behind the torches there. Yeah, they've just settled into a holy grail torch, just, you know, that'll yeah, make which, you. Yeah, which, uh, which I'm not happy about, <laughs> the way they're, they're pretty uncommon these days. For them. Absolutely. Yeah, they don't harass the torches too much. No, that's good. You know? That's um, good. And the coral-wise, the, uh, the clams, that, that squamosa there, which isn't open right now. Yes. Um, he's about five years old. I got him. He's an aquacultured one. He was about uh, less than 10 centimetres, about five centimetres when I got him. And yes. That's five years growth right there. Wow. So that's why he's, he's sitting on the sand now because of the size, it's the same as these two clams. It's They're so difficult to show the perspective of size because when I get yeah. the camera in close like I do now, yeah. it, it just doesn't show, like you'll see a fish swim past and things like when we're looking at that yellow tang before, he's a big yellow tang, but next to some of the corals and things in here, he looks small because yeah. it's, it's such a huge presence. Well, same as the powder blue and the blamingi there. The, the blamingi is still small, but you can see the colors and the size, but. Yeah, and they're big fish, but uh, they don't look that big in this system because it's just, it's yeah. a big system with some lots of coral in there. It really looks like a piece of the reef. Well, for me, the, one of the best things about the, the tank is the size of the corals. I've, you know, I've, I've been into the hobby for marines for close to 30 years. And, you know, these days it's all about frags and yeah. taking cuttings, basically. And that. I like a tank like this where it's growing in, you know. Where Absolutely. You don't just pepper the tank full of frags all over the place and wait five years. You know, these, for example, these these stags here. Yeah. Again, Stunning well over stags. 10 years old growth. Yeah. I've fragged them so much from, you know, when you have them for that long, you always get dead bits and dead heads. And, of course. Uh, and, uh, same as um, what we commonly call the Dallas here in Australia. Yeah. You know, that. Over 10 years, I've had that. Amazing. The one there is just a frag of the original colony. Yes. But that original colony is a frag from the this size is a frag from the original colony I had years ago. Yeah. I've just fragged it over the years, yep. sold them at the shop, and you know, and brought some back. And that that started from a 10 centimeter piece. You know. Beautiful. So, so you can see in such a um, stunning coral too. It's just that nothing fluoresces green like a beautiful, yeah. healthy Dallas. Yeah, if it wasn't, if it didn't grow so fast and wasn't so common, it'd be worth a lot more. Oh yeah, that'd be that'd be a home deposit right there. Yeah. But um, that's another feature yeah. that makes it such a cool coral is that it is so hardy and does yeah. grow so fast. Should be in every tank, yeah. really. It's absolutely and, incredible. And these, the teal, um, the teal stag there as well. That just keeps growing and growing. Off, you know, I've, I've fragged and through given away and thrown out even like twice that much in the last three years because it's grown that it's much. You know? It's got a really cool growth pack yeah. too, quite open, really. Yeah, that's why I like it. Really I got it from a friend of mine years ago, and back as if about three years ago, and it's just grown ballistic. 
Absolutely. It's very stunning. open, which is the best thing about it. You know? Amazing. Same, same as these two birds' nests, just from tiny, you know, uh, 50 cent pieces, I put them side by side. I think the one on the right is uh, what I call the panapi or the panape, whatever yes. you want to call it. I call it panapi. Yes. I just wanted to see how it grows alongside the, you know, the common pink bird's nest. Yes. And at the moment, I wanted them to grow into each other. They're like, as close they're to fused growing, as you can get. Yeah, yeah. They're not really growing into each other. So. Like it's, not, yeah. it's about a, a head, human head size. Those two yeah. pieces, and it almost looks like the two halves of the brain, the way they're yeah. just growing down the middle there. It's absolutely stunning. Yeah. And it's not all just about sticks. I mean, you've got some incredible no, LPS in this no, system too. One, one of the things that, I mean, you, you've known me for a while, and anyone that really knows me, all the, most of the time I had the shop, I was anti uh, Acropora and SPS. Yes. Um, as a shopkeeper, you know, the, when you get new stocking, you've got your, your, your LPS, you've got your softies that are, you know, very common, easy to grow. Then. With the SPS, especially going back 10, 15, 20 years ago, you know, people, we didn't have the experience of keeping it long-term. Yes. So it used to put me off when you have to educate people how to keep it and then, you know, they have some success or not. But whereas if you, they bought a leather coral, that's yes. it, you know, six months time would be the size of a... <laughs> For sure, you know? yeah, yeah. So one of the drugs at the shop, when I, when I had it was... Um, People used to laugh at me how anti SPS I was, <laughs> but gradually, you know, it's drawn me in. But one of the things I like a mix of everything, you know. Yeah. I, I even mean. had leathers in here at one stage many years ago. Actually, on the eight footer, which was there before, but they just grew too much and took up too much. Take up a lot of real estate, and then when you yeah. cut them, they slime a lot. And the exactly. SPS don't no, like them no, too I much. I've gone more and more into the SPS, but I've still get my hammers and my torches. So I'm mad for. Uh, you know what we call brain corals. Sure. You know your uh, lobos, symphelia. Definitely. You know, they, they keep changing the uh, <laughs> taxonomy. Though, but, you know. This week they're lobos yeah. and symphelias, but um, what I, I like about them stunners in there is under your moonlights these days with the LEDs. You know, under the strong moonlights, they they just glow. You know? Yeah, yeah. They glow in, and the, you get your real colours come out of them. Where they look nice during the day, but in the in the night time, they that's where they really you know. And a pretty hardy coral too. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the symphelia types, you know, have quite easy success. The, what I know is the lobos, which is more lobed. Yes. Uh, they're not quite as hardy, I find. Okay. Blastos, just throw them in and... F that blasto yeah, rock they, is just ridiculous. Yeah. That almost doesn't look like blasto because yeah. they're so fat and happy. Yeah. No, again, he's about 10 years old. He's from um, WA, from um, Nivalu. Okay, yes. Area from one of my collectors years ago, and he's, yeah. I fragged that, and, but he just keeps growing again. Yeah. <laughs> Stunning piece. And, and some, of, and there's more down this side. Yeah. yeah, no shortage. This one down here is absolutely yeah. gorgeous. The colours on him, beautiful piece. Very, very nice. The fish, and obviously, uh, excited by the camera, yeah. which is a good sign. They're, they're not shy. There. Oh, no, no, we'll give them the feed if you want. Them <laughs> yeah. I, I, with the feed, and I, I don't feed uh, frozen food much. I'm just too lazy. I've got two automatic feeders. Sure. Just feed two or three times a day dry food, and you know, they even at, at the start if they don't like dry, they I just persist with it. I only feed frozen to start off with sometimes, but they all, you know, they're all on pellets, flake and pellets, just a mix. Oh, I can't see a single there. fish in there that looks oh, remotely yeah. skinny. No, they're all. They're all <laughs> <laughs> it looks like they're getting plenty of pellets. Yeah. Give them a feed and see. Sure, yeah. Let's yeah. let's see how you get these fish. So, uh... there we go. the other ones at that end. And... <laughs> Look at them come streaming. Oh yeah. And they actually know when they're about to be fed. I, I don't know how they know, but you they've see, it's got their body clock in time. Yeah, they've got their body clock. And when I change the times on the feed, it takes them about a week to figure <laughs> out. And they, you see, feeding time, they just hang around. Yeah. under the food and <laughs> somehow they they know they work it out incredible they take it from the lights or whatever I, i'm not sure it's, you know? we definitely um don't give fish enough credit for the smarts they have that's for sure yeah and then there's quite a few more you can see the uh, monty cap red. yeah yeah i've got rid of so much of that again it's just it's a, it's a fast grower it's a beautiful thing but it's a pest at this stage any shop people will tell you, <laughs> you, know, you can't even give it away these days yeah, it's one of those ones that, uh, at least in Australia, did um, come in at a high price, and uh, now, yeah, you... That's great when they grow well. On, on my um, Facebook page and my, my ID, I've got a picture of 
like one that's just grown perfectly and it was from the same colony but the, after a while I find they just like the birds nest they just grow and they start to look messy they overlap too much so you've got to keep fragging them and they just lose the, the look you know? yeah fair enough too the best one around here can you, can you look around sure you'll see one of my favourites that you can't even really see oh nice that yeah that one there yeah he's got the nice coloured polyps yeah. and just growing from a small piece but he's growing back towards the back of the tank so you yeah. <laughs> Nice view from the side of the tank here when you're uh, on yeah. the couch. You see the Primo, Primo Monty there. There's a couple of SBS in here that um, I've just not seen before, and they're, they're very close to each other, which is um, intriguing. There's this gorgeous, I'll see if I can point it on camera, this smooth skin green here yep. with yep. real long extensions is just, that's just absolutely wowing me. Yeah. stunning piece. I got him from um, a friend of mine, the guy who actually bought the shop, the business from me. Yes. Um, he had a colony that he was trying to grow, so we fragged it to try and, um, which was a good thing because his original colony he ended up losing. Mm -hmm. um, if one, anyone knows Ollie at Reflections Aquarium or Reflections Aquatics now, my old store. So he's uh, still a, one of Melbourne's SPS specialists. Yep. But that piece, yeah, he's he's lost the original and that piece, it's, it's, still it's very slow growing, but yeah, it's, it's just kicked into life in the last six months. Absolutely yeah. gorgeous coloration. I'm not sure the species or the name, but... Uh, it's we don't need to know we just know it's beautiful <laughs> and then the other one i love is this uh this greeny blue stag it's almost green with blue yeah well, growths that's, coming off it that's um i forget the proper name um but it's from wa yes uh from B uh, batavia coral farms yeah yeah from Jerome um, over there yeah yeah um it's i think he calls it the, the yeti oh like yeah yep. he's famous yeti it's weird because that piece, and if you zoom in, that, that piece there, yes. are the same. Wow. That one there came, I think, from my old shop. Yes. And that one from another friend of mine, another shopkeeper. Yes. Um, and they've just grown differently. It's grown differently. And I'm Incredible. I'm not sure what's going on, but that one, yes, take it up a bit of green and a bit no, of green. No, it's you know? taken up pure beautifulness. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely yeah. stunning piece. Yeah. And there's yeah. no shortage of other crazy yeah. SBS in here, but... Um, yeah. They're the Most ones of that the stuff here came. I, the stuff I've had for years came from when I was, you know, when I had reflections. Uh, and the newer stuff has come from reflections now and from Deer Park Aquarium, which is close to where I live. Yes. So, they, you know, good SP, SPS specialists. You know, you know, you always find them. You can see there's a lot of stuff in here, so I'm sort of picky as to what I, I find because I, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you can't be putting in. Yeah. I, Every every girl that comes in, yeah, the real you estate's space, pretty. You, know, you find space for stuff, you know. But it will tell us about how you have gone about mounting some of the corals in here because you've well, uh, it's a big tank, but you've done well to fit these corals in there. The spot, you know, um, yeah, I'd, super blue reef putty, just basics. I I, I hardly ever use um, frag plugs. Okay, I find they you know they're, they're too much of a pain to fit somewhere. But I've, uh, I, I use. Um, reef putty with super glue together mixed together mixed or together yeah okay i find that often gives you a much stronger bond to things putty alone tends to especially on heavier stuff yeah. doesn't hold let's go but yeah with the super glue gives you a really strong bond quite quickly yes um the biggest headache as you can see in here everything's quite close is i'm constantly fragging because everything's growing into each other some Pretty coral some warfare. <laughs> are quite happy to touch and yes don't mind like like you said, the smooth skin next to that Harida. Yeah, thankfully the they're doing great. They don't even care about each other. Which is surprising. I would have thought the Harida would have. Yeah, would I've have the Harida pretty just, good. just to be sure, but yeah. I, it hasn't really, even when they touched it. Yeah, yeah. Shoes, that's great. my biggest headache, not headache, but my biggest task. That's the maintenance task. Yeah, yeah. yeah I don't really do, <laughs> to be honest, this tank's been running for so long in, in this size and the previous sizes that I um, don't really do much with it. Yeah. Apart from topping up the RO and so on. Sure, it's in fairly um, autopilot but, mode. But just um, maintaining, you no know, snipping here and there to stop things touching is, is the biggest, biggest challenge. Yeah. And when you get dead dead heads, I mean, you know, these things I've had for so long, you always, you know, again, going back to it, one of the things I used to hate about SPS when people used to come to my shop and talk about problems with their tanks and so on and giving that advice, you know, with um, my cash phrase or whatever, you know, with softies, SP, um, LPS, if you've got a problem with the tank, when you come home 
uh, if there's something wrong, the power's off, whatever, that you know that the corals have closed up. Yes. You can say, all right, I've got to do a water change. I've got to bring the temperature or whatever. And they next day, they're fine. Yes. With SPS, you come home, they're white. Yeah. So you know, <laughs> or, they, or they trick you. They look fine, and then they die a month yeah. later. Yeah. <laughs> so you don't have much choice. If, you, if you're lucky, they go brown. Yeah. Then you take six months to color up. <laughs> Definitely. So that's, that's one thing, you know, you've really got to be on top of your chemistry. Yeah. You know, Especially with the new tanks and with newer corals, you know. New tanks so hard on SPS. These, these guys, um, at the moment, we can look when you're ready. But, sure. but um, you know, I've, there's all the KH stabilizing equipment out there now. You know, yeah. so many different brands coming on the market. I'm old school. I used to do everything manually, test my water three, four times a week, and so yes. on. But with everything in here, I just finally had enough because you know. It's, these corals are so sturdy. I've had my KH up to 14. Wow, yeah. Down as, down as low as 6. Yeah, yeah. And I've never, I've always got away with it. Yeah, Never yeah. had an issue. Never lost colonies because of those swings, you know. Wow, nice. Yeah. Um, well, well settled into aquarium yeah, life. I do water changes every week, two weeks, just empty. I've got 2,000 litres of fresh water stored, salt water storage. Yes. You know, I was in the... Uh, routine of doing like a sump about 200 liters every week then mm -hmm. winter every two weeks three weeks and to be honest with you now i change water about every two or three months and this tank is stabilized happy as you know um i want to i use the i think you know the triton method i use some you know that sort of method method methodology, methodology yes where i test things yes and just change what needs to be changed and, sure you know well are you able to run us through the equipment you are running on the on even like in the sump area yeah, of this? Well, the lights, with you on that's nice and easy. We've got nine Radeon XR30s. Beautiful. Gen 4, I'll be changing to Gen 6 at some stage, just because I can. <laughs> Gen 4s, I've again been a shopkeeper, I've gone through many different lights. Yes. Um, but I, I found the Radeons are on the expensive side for Australia, but for me personally, they're, they're the best lights. Uh, oh, I mean, I, 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 yeah, which is a big thing to say, you know. I used to have the ATI mixed, uh, I forget what they're Sure, called. yeah, the, uh, the, the hybrid LED, fixtures. Yeah, hybrid LEDs and uh, T5s mixed. Yes. They were fantastic, but in this room, especially in the summer, they used to oh, overheat. Oh, get hot, yeah. <laughs> I used to have big overheating issues, but I've tried the uh, Giesemann verves are really good. Yes. But uh, uh, to be objective and honest, I've had really good had results with the radials. I mean, if you, if you ever needed a sales pitch for Ecotech Radians, Gen 4s oh, yeah. can produce a tank like right. this. So if anyone out there has got Gen 5s and they're looking to upgrade to Gen 6, maybe just um, hold your horses, unless, <laughs> unless, you, you, unless you, your tank is uh, yeah. beating this. I've not seen the Gen 6s. I've, I've sold and installed Gen 5s for clients yes. that I do. But um, I'm happy with them. But the Gen 4s, um, yeah, just fantastic. Great light, yeah. yeah. But like all electrical things, particularly in a reef tank environment, they're not going to last forever. So, no. good opportunity. Between the Gen Five and Sixes, they've got the uh, the Mobius. They're much easier to program. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um, yep. Which is a good thing, but you don't really need to reprogram in that. No, way. set and forget. But yeah. still handy to be able to do it that way. Uh, yeah. As I say, that's just my, me being honest and objective. I, and I, I know this. I know. Well, I know all the suppliers for most things, but sure. uh, and on good terms with all of them. But no, the, well, it's radions. I. Yeah. You can only speak to personal experience, yeah. and I don't think anyone would argue with you that uh, this tank's not lit well because have a look at the growth on it. Yeah, there you go. Um, underneath, I'll take these panels off. Sure. This big clan here that uh, we haven't even looked at. <laughs> got this about 20 years ago from, uh, believe it or not, from one of my collectors, found it on the beach and yeah. came down to me to use as wiper. Yes. So I've never sold it, bleached it, and size but I've never seen one that big. It's a beautiful the piece. Life, I thought I had a big clamshell it might have been probably half that size. <laughs> well these days you wouldn't even get them from the collector they'll, they'll be too expensive. Oh, yeah shipping of course you yeah, absolute bomb. I wish I could remember which collector gave it to me because it was gifted to me it's beautiful. Yeah I yeah. I would never sell it. No stunning piece. Um, yeah underneath it's no crazy complicated no, process I've under here. These panels. This is a lot simpler than most places it takes you probably seen in the past. So run us through, we've yeah, got... Uh, I'm, I'm very old school. Hey, I like to be, old school works. I, I like to have volume of water as a safety precaution. Um, and again, from being a hobby, 
I've been keeping fish since I was five or six years old. Marines, you know, for probably 30, yeah, 30 years now. Yes. The whole 20 years I've lived in Australia, I've, I've kept them. And one thing I, I, I'm scared of is technology, you know? Sure. Too much technology, you're always just testing things and making sure things are, aren't broken, you know? Yeah, definitely. Especially in someone that used to work in IT, I know what. <laughs> it's a self-fueling industry. Yeah, exactly. so <laughs> like to make keep, things, things that break. What I always say to my clients: keep it simple. The less things you've got to check, the better. The skimmer. Try and oversize the skimmer. That's a big. <coughs> excuse me. Big Deltec, is it? Deltec three thousand I yep. DC. One of the, the new models. Yes. Um, so it's it's rated, you know, for bigger than this tank. Yes. Easy to clean. Beautiful. Looks after itself. You know, that never fails. Very low, uh, low power usage. Low power, no noise. Yeah, works um, a treat. One of the problems I have in this room, because it's quite enclosed, is um, always having problems with air movement. So mm -hmm. my pH always drops. Sure. So I've got a big cat stirrer on there. Yes. That's the the Deltec. Another Deltec unit. KM five hundred S. Yes. Yeah, and even that's not enough. So I, because that can play up with your cage as well, so sure. I also got this big, it's a Pacific Sun CO2 scrubber, yep. very simple unit, works yep. well, does the job. Pacific Sun do good units as well, yeah it does the job, so that, even that still, I can only buffer my pH up to about 8.1 to 8.3 if I'm lucky, Yes. but usually about 8.1, 8.2, you know, I wish I could get up to 8.4. <laughs> Constantly, but no. And even since I've been using the um, CO2 scrubber for yes. about six months now, it's it hasn't so much raised my pH, but it's kept it steady. Stabilised it a lot more. Okay. It swings. Sure. The yep. pH and, I, and I've seen if the corals take off. Even more. Seen a good response. Okay. Good um, to know. And then yeah, the return pumps, just the uh, Eco Tech uh, Vectra. Vectra. Um, and so, yeah, that's been running quite solidly. So clean it out every now and then. So, yeah, as you can see, the sump's not the cleanest. And uh, I mean, you look at the tank. You know, I've, one of the things I, I do at the, since I sold the shop, we haven't even touched too much. But I do a lot of aquarium installations and uh, tank maintenance, like yes. more bigger tanks, high-end tanks. And sure. one thing I always tell my clients not to worry about is people. Are, Obsessive cleanliness these days. Yeah, you know, yeah. You know, your, you know everything to clean. You know, to clean the skimmer, to clean the sun constantly, and yeah. like it's good to if you can do it and keep it up. Fair enough, but it's keeping everything spotless isn't going to make your tank better. No, it's a living ecosystem. It's all part of it. You know? Yeah, yeah, but definitely. Don't lose sleep on a bit of slime at the bottom of your tank. No, of course you know? not. You know, and then. Uh, this is my RO section to see it's probably bigger than most people's RO section. <laughs> it's a pretty large top off chamber. Yeah, yeah I put about uh, 60 litres every week, once a week into here. Sure. Um, again, I, I've never bothered plumbing the RO. It's the external wall, I could do it, but like, it's, it's easy enough. I've got storage in my garage. Yep. I just. Um, one, up. one less it's automation. Nice. Yeah. Yep. Again, less automation. I, I know when it's done, I've done it, I know it's done. Yep. End of story. Yep. I, I don't have to think as my. Or top up, you know. Yeah, it's a float valve yeah. stuck yeah. or something. Yeah, exactly. yeah, absolutely. Uh, and that just uses a tons osmolator to just trickle yep. the water in as, as needed. And, yeah, Tried and tested. And I just, as I said, fill it up once a week, about 60 litres. And again, I've got a just a pH monitor there, which yes. is 8.1 at the moment. Just your Deltec, uh, Deltec, um, Teco Chiller. Teco Chiller. Uh, which is very handy here in Australia. I, I did, went for many years without one and always had to run the house there, con and so on. But sure. um, that's one of the best units, best things I've put on the system yeah. two yep. years ago because it's kept it. temperature. I let, I, I, again, I don't panic about temperature swings. Okay. In the, in the, when it's cold, this tank gets down to 23 degrees. Yep, right. With no issues at all. Yep. When it's warm, it goes up to about 27. Wow. And the, before the chiller gets in and no issues whatsoever. No issues, yeah. You know, um, People panicking about things they well, possibly without, don't need to panic without about. Without the chiller, I've had it up to about 30 degrees. Wow, yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely pushing the... Uh... Yeah, but again, I've never lost anything at 30. Above 30 is where you start to really panic. It starts getting a pretty fine line there for sure. Yeah, but um, I, yeah, 
Uh, 25 is what you aim for, but yeah, this tank goes from 23 to 27 without any issues whatsoever. Amazing, super so, okay. simple yeah. approach. So you've got drains coming in through here, you've got a little bit of uh, filter wool there. Yeah, filter wool. Yep. No filter, can't be bothered with filter socks where you have to keep checking that they're not clogged up. Sure, these sure. Days, the filter mats are fashionable these days. I've yeah. Been, I've been thinking of changing to one, but again... That works. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> the, 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 this works, just a bit of wool, dacron. Yeah. The dirty sump, I don't lose any sleep over it. No, no. I prefer if it was spotless and clean, but so be it. Oh, well. Yeah. I prefer to have my tank look like that, so... <laughs> <laughs> that's where that's where the focus goes, and um, there's absolutely nothing wrong with that at all. Yeah, for automation, saying uh, that I'm old school, and finally, yeah, that's <laughs> where I've got this is my, where the technology hides. Yeah, I've got uh, my dose um, focus tronic units. Yeah, yeah, great. Got the dose tronic for my dosing pump, which is what I like about them. Yes. You probably what well, you've done articles about them before. Yeah, yeah, fantastic gear. Yeah. I like apart from. Compatibility with other units is it's a five channel, yes, rather than the standard four, which yes, a few are getting five channels now, sure, which is you know one thing which is handy for me, yes. Uh, the Alcatronic has been fantastic for me for the reasons I said before about having Alps giving that stability, yes, yeah. swings, yep. Um, and it's a pretty solid unit, just you know, a bit of tweaking, but that's you know, I, I run the cage about between eight, eight point five. Again, I don't lose sleep, you know, some of like some of the guys out there, you know, if it's if you set it for eight and it swings slightly higher, people lose sleep over it. You know, yeah. eight point oh one or eight point, you know, big, but <laughs> me, as long as it's eight eight point five for for what it was before, that's perfect. That's just fine, yeah, Compared perfect. Before I, I use this, as I said, I, I would just test three or four times a week and adjust what I need to do. But my out would go from eight to nine to 10 to 8.5, you know, constantly yeah. moving. Pretty solid swings. But again, these crawls are so stable, I never had any issues, sure. which is, you know, crazy, but um, compared to what some people say, you know, my, my cage goes to nine and everything's dead, so yeah. that doesn't <laughs> But we don't experience that here. Pretty much, whatever I tell it, 8.5, 8 I let it swing sure. between those without issue, you know? Um, I did have the Master Tronic on here, which is a really, really good unit, but yeah. for me, I never, I'm too lazy. Yep. JD to really test it and monitor it and my tank is so stable I didn't really need it. Sure. Yeah. They, the focus trotting stuff is uh, is really good. But the best thing anyone could put in their tank, especially with SPS, as far as I'm concerned, is a KH monitor. Yeah. And there's so many different ones around there that for me I've I've gone with the Alcatronic and Dodge Tronic because they're, they're you know no, they're, they're solid units. Solid units, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Good I software, go through, um, good hardware. In my dosing, I, I go through calcium and alk about uh, this much every month, less than yeah, 20. Yeah, right. So 20 I'm, litre containers that you're talking yeah, about monthly. Yeah, swings, I dose between 400 and using the Randy's, yes. loosely the Randy's recipe, as yes. everyone should know, but uh, between four and, 400 to 500 litres of calcium and cage alk every day. 400 millilitres, yep, yep. Uh, 400 millilitres every yep. day. Wow. Um, magnesium a lot less. Sure. Um, but yeah, so I've, I've thought about putting a calcium reactor on there, but again, it's just. Um, yeah, hey, if that, <laughs> that's working, <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't I change a thing. It. It's just one more piece of equipment to monitor this. Yeah. Just every, you know, once a month, change this. Yeah. Another mix, do a quick mix. I buy it in bulk because obviously I'm in the business, but everyone, anyone yes. can buy it in bulk. Of course. And I just mix up 20 liters of what I need, and it's done. Um, well, you can see uh, a lot of fish in there. Yes. Probably, well, not probably, definitely more fish than I usually advise my clients. But, um, <laughs> it is what it is. But um, yes. I use no pox to control nitrate. Okay. And occasionally, not occasionally, I use small amounts of lanthanum chloride. Sure. Which is, you know, you. Skip the phosphates. People, people are scared of it quite often. I don't know about these days, but in the old, you know, old days, you know, five, six years ago, there was a lot. A lot of discussions. Some people loved it, some people hated it. I've been sure. for about 10 years. You know, it's working well for you. Small amounts and dosing, you know. So when the tank's solid, believe it yeah. or not, with all these fish in there, I've even counted them. There's fish that you haven't even seen. Yeah. In the rocks. <laughs> um, I can keep my nitrates at the moment, I think it's about 10. Yes. Between 0 and 10 nitrates. Which is uh, super impressive. One for the fish load. But for also the, the age of the tank, yeah. um, 
yeah. I mean, with all the coral growth in there, it's a pretty, yeah. it's pretty tight in there as well. That's so with uh, about twenty to thirty mil of nopox a day in this okay. tank. Sure. And, and with that, I can get my, my nitrates down to about five, where I even have to back off the nopox to, to about five mil a day, which is yeah. crazy for this yeah. size. Yeah. You know? The lanthanum I use about one mil a day. Sure. This tank. Yep. It keeps the phosphate close to zero. Wow. You know. Amazing. Uh, I like to keep the phosphate about 0 0.05. Anything yes. below 0.1, I'm happy with. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I don't lose sleep. No. Over that, is people panicking too much about that. No, no. I think higher nitrates gives me more problems than higher phosphates. Sure. Personally. Yes. You know. Uh, but yeah. So again, with all this stock to keep those conditions, it's it's pretty. Pretty, I'm happy with it, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's working a treat. So, hey, what about the uh, trace elements? You do any trace element dosing? Yeah, um, for two reasons. One yes. problem I've developed in this tank, which a lot of us have, and it's, it's been a minor problem of the old flatworm. Sure. Acropora flatworm, which is a, you know, it's read up its head in Australia over the last few years. Yes. It never used to be a problem 20 years ago. Yes. Um, so I use Zeovit uh, flatworm stop okay. every day, and along with the flatworm stop, the Zeovit also recommend using Coral Booster, which is their mix of aminos and so on. Yes. Um, which I've, I've used this for years too. Um, so yeah, whatever, I can't remember, about 10, 15 mil a day of sure. I put in. Um, with this, the, the flatworm stop is one of the, there's a two or three products on the market I've tried, uh, but flatworm stop for me personally, that has been the best to keep the flatworms in check. As well. I mean, I've got a few rasses and so on in there. Yes. Always hit and miss. Some people swear by, by six vines and banana rasses and so on. Um, but I, when I stop using flatworm stop, I, I can see the difference in about two to three months. I get a big yeah, wow. flatworms. Yeah, okay. At the moment, I can breeze through this whole tank with a, um, a turkey base and I might find one or two. Yeah, okay. Yep, yep. Combination yeah. of the. Uh, yeah, combination natural and, yep. and chemical means. But hey, whatever using works. Coral booster with the flatworm stop, I, I see that really gives me good colours. On, you on couldn't the argue colors. with the colours in there. Yeah. <laughs> corals are glowing. Really nice stuff. Sustainable reefs products I've used as well. Yes. So they're all they're, they're all good products. Lots out of good options. Market. Yeah, lots of options these days. Not like twenty years ago. <laughs> for me, the zero bit is it's. Uh, I bring it in from overseas. Sure. It's not cheap, but it, you know you don't use. It's concentrated, so you don't use that much. Yeah, well, that's not a lot on a system this um, yeah. this size with this kind of coral load. And it does, as I say, hundred percent flatworm stop is one of the best products I've found personally. Yes. For keeping on top of the flatworms. Yep. Yep. Without doing too much damage to anything else. Yeah. Nice. Nice. The fish just enjoy. Does raise the nitrates a little bit. You know, I found that uh, you can keep keep that in check. Yeah, yeah, that's easy enough to tackle Thanks otherwise. You just missed two of my favourite fish, the Mimingi. That's a nice pair. Yeah, the, the purple mask angel, of the, the, the Venustus angels. Venustus like, angels, got a pair in there, yeah. I saw them yeah. talking about beautiful fish. Yeah, I think they're sometimes called purple mask angels, but I've always known them as Venustus angels. They're not common here in Australia. Definitely not. They're common in Taiwan, so I'm told, but yeah. Crazy nice fish. Is there a... Uh, Anything else you'd like to tell us about the tank or um, any advice you could give reef keepers out there? Um, there's always a lot more you can tell about the tank, just sit there looking at it, but the advice <laughs> from my point of view for reef keepers, just keep it simple. Yep. Don't get too much technology unless you're a tech head and you know you, you like to play around with things. Sure. You know? If you want to come home, sit, up, sit on your chair, have a beer and just relax, then just keep things simple. Yep. Yeah, and, and uh, but saying that, make sure you've got the right equipment for what you want to do, like um, like the lighting. If you want to have an SPS tank, yep. get things right. You know, good lighting, good flow, good water quality. Yeah, the three things we've always loved so about. All you need, you know? and you don't need to have like you don't have sixty wave makers in there. You've got uh, four uh, big twinsies. Hundred percent, no. You don't have the latest drop lights in there, though. You may have soon. You've got uh, Gen Four radians in there. The yeah. filtration on this system is super simple, but um, yeah. working an absolute treat. If you can get those things right, lighting for what, what you need, like if I had softies in there, lighting is hardly an issue. Yeah. Right? <laughs> but for SPS, you know, you keep, have the good lighting for any corals, 
good water movement and good water quality. And Beautiful. Yeah. So yeah, it doesn't get simpler than that, you know. Okay. And lastly, when you see a problem, fix it. Yeah, okay. Don't, don't sit on it. Don't sell fix it tomorrow. You, sure. Tropical fish, you can do that. Goldfish, you can 100% do that. Sure. Maybe. But uh, marines, again, uh, one of my biggest. And see the mandarin. So as you know, Oh wow, yeah, he's a big unit. Eh? The females in there somewhere, they're normally side by side, constant, constantly. Yeah, yeah. good size unit. Yeah. With a marine taxi, if you see something wrong, like uh, if a coral falls on the floor upside down, pick it up and turn it over. Yeah. And it's going to die. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? you can't sit on it yeah. for a day. And that's one of my issues I found where you do a lot of maintenance, where you might go, only go to the client every, you know, once a month, once every two weeks, or once a week. Yes. If something needs doing, it needs to be done straight away. Yeah. If the yeah. skimmer is overflowing, you need to empty it and find out why, yes. rather than wait for your maintenance man to turn up and do it. Like, you know? <laughs> Definitely. So that's more than anything I've said. I think that's. I'll, I'll leave it at that. If, if there's something wrong, jump on it. Jump on it. Don't wait because it's it's a lot easier to fix it straight away than wait till other things have gone wrong because of it. Yeah. Know? Yeah. For so, sure. One final question I've got yeah. for you. What, what's the future plans for this tank? Uh, just keep maintaining it. Just keep maintaining, just keep no. keep those corals f from growing into and yeah, over each other and just enjoy. Yeah, and you see what, it, just go with the flow. You know, that's one of the reasons I was happy to have you around because I think, you know, just to let other people see this tank has been a bit of an effort initially. Now I don't really do much on it, but um, you know, everything comes to an end in life, you know, so I know one day, Something's going to go wrong. Yeah, of course. You know? It's fantastic to have a uh, recorded memento of the tank. Yeah, and this is at about the five year mark? For this one, for this tank? just before I sold the shop, so it's about five years ago yeah, now. Yeah, yeah. And but there was an eight footer in this place for about five years, and I had a seven footer before that. Yeah, right, okay. And before that, there was a ten footer here. <laughs> that was all softies. Sure. Really a softy tank, you know? Oh, well, it's an absolutely incredible tank, and I um, cannot thank you enough for uh, letting us over with the camera so that we can um, share this with the world yeah. because it's a tank that uh, the people need to see, and um, you should be incredibly proud with what you've achieved here because it's a tank that every one of us watching this channel uh, aspires to. So, um, well done, and uh, yeah. keep up the great work. No problem. Cheers. Thank you. All right, guys, there you have it. Let me know what you thought of Ernie's home reef aquarium because um, to be honest, I'm still scraping my jaw off the floor. It's just so, so full of incredible corals and fish. And to be honest, most of the incredible things in there were not very rare or very uh, high-end pieces, just really healthy, very well-grown fish and corals and all together just worked an absolute treat. Plus you combine that with the fact that it is such a very straightforward and simple system. It restores faith that you do not need every gadget under the sun to have a successful reef tank. In fact, I would imagine 99.99% of us in the world would trade our reef tanks in for what Ernie has in his house right now because it absolutely sets the standard. Now, if you would like someone like Ernie to wave his magic wand over your next reef tank build or maybe even just help with your maintenance in Melbourne, Melbourne, Australia. He does build, maintain, upgrade, all of the things you could do for both private and commercial reef tanks. So um, check out the website there if you'd like some of Ernie's fantastic work on your next reef tank. Other than that, guys, I'll probably wrap the video up there. It was a very special invite to be able to go over to Ernie's place. So if you could give him some words of encouragement and um, pass on my thanks in the comment section and down below and also the thumbs up. I'm sure if we could get a thousand thumbs up on this video, that would absolutely make Ernie's day. I know it would make my day at least, so um, cost you no money at all. If you can give a thumbs up, I'd highly appreciate it. Other than that, guys, if you've got any questions, comments, feedback for either Ernie or myself, pop in the comment section down below. And last but not least, if you've made it this far, thank you so much for watching. This has been quite a long video, but um, I just couldn't edit it down any further. There was way too much awesomeness to cover. That being said, I will wrap things up here. Thanks again for watching. Stay safe. Keep reefing. Cheers. Bye.